Hey, what is up guys? My name is Tom Spark, and today we're talking about uh, IP addresses. So if you're unfamiliar with IP addresses, essentially what an IP address is, it's like your computer's digital footprint for, you know, the internet. Um, it actually stands for Internet Protocol Address. So anytime you're on a website and you see an ad that happens to know like you, where you are, you're thinking, you know, that's creepy. Um, well, a lot of websites, applications, and your, even your internet service provider knows your IP and they could kind of track where you are in the world. Additionally, they could kind of track your computer's, you know, digital footprint. This is how people go to jail for, you know, various reasons on the internet. Their IP address gets logged, FBI shows up their door, and so forth. Now, you don't really need to be a criminal to be worrying about your privacy and your security like your IP address. Maybe you want to protect yourself from getting doxxed from somebody. Maybe you want to just uh, protect your uh, anonymity on the internet. Or maybe you just want to protect your anonymity uh, while torrenting or something like that. Not only that, guys, but changing your IP address, not necessarily hiding it, can also have benefits when it comes to accessing content um, restricted um, through country. So a lot of the U.S.-based streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, um, Amazon Video, all these are kind of like U.S.-based services where you need to live in the U.S. to get the best content. So if you're in Germany or Australia, you can actually change your IP and get access to that content um, in a legal fashion. It's not illegal to uh, you know change your IP address like this. Um, now, a lot of these companies don't want you doing this, um, even though it is legal. Um, they just don't really want you bypassing restrictions and licensing restrictions they have with other companies. So if you're in Germany, for example, Netflix only wants you accessing German uh, content on their platform. But fortunately, with the right VPN, you can get around a lot of these restrictions. So the dedicated IPS system, there are a couple of you know VPNs out there that offer stuff like this, Astral VPN, Trust Zone, some of these other VPNs, which I don't really consider that legitimate in terms of pricing, security, and so on. TorGuard is always my top pick for streaming, and specifically because it has so many IP options. And TorGuard really nails it home with these IP options. So we go to the website, torguard.net, click on the link down in the description below. And we're going to examine what some of these options are because it can be kind of complicated uh, for, you know, VPN beginners. The reason I'm actually making this video is because someone asked me in one of my streams, um, you know, what is the difference between various IPs um, from a VPN perspective? What can they offer me, um, you know, compared to just a regular IP? So starting out with a VPN, you have a regular IP, which is it's just shared IP. You're sharing that IP with specific other users. And it provides you a nominity layer because your IP cannot be isolated from other people. So you can't really be held responsible for what other people are doing. So that's kind of like the main idea. However, a lot of websites, you know, like Bank of America, some gaming applications like Battle.net, if you're using a weird IP, they kind of notice that it's not the normal IP you're using with. Sometimes they lock you out, require you to re-verify. So in these instances, it can be a bit annoying. Not only that, but some websites kind of block proxy and VPN users because they don't want people trolling around. Websites like Craigslist, 4chan, and websites like that often you know, create that problem for users. So in these specific instances that I just outlined, um, a dedicated IP is gonna be extremely useful. Um, you could purchase that as an add-on for you know tons of countries here. So these aren't necessarily for streaming per se. Um, it's just for like what I outlined. That's why there's so many options. Now, if you're one of those people who want to access the U.S. content library and you live outside the um, U.S. but you want to watch U.S. content, um, Amazon Video, Hulu, Crunchyroll, Netflix, U.S. content library, things like that, you're going to want to stream IP. Or if you're just in the U.S. already and you want to use a VPN while watching this kind of stuff, then you're going to need a streaming IP. So there's not as many options here, but you can still purchase a U.S. IP or some of these other IPs for these specific locations. It's going to be the same price. Now, we also have a sports IP, which is if you want to watch, you know, live sports, um, you know, football, those kind of things. Um, UK and Spain are going to be good locations to pick for a sports IP. So, of course, if you have all three use cases, it can get expensive, right? You might be thinking, well, you don't really need a dedicated IP um, if you're purchasing a streaming IP unless you need one of these specific locations for what you're doing. Um, but there's not really going to be many people who need all three. Um, now, you might not need any of these. If you're just completely satisfied with the anonymity and you don't really have any problems with a shared IP, then you're going to be fine with just a normal VPN subscription. 
But if you do want to stream, um, you're going to pick that streaming IP. Now we do have a couple other options as well. Um, there are a lot of options here. Is what that's kind of Horgard's you know thing, right? They love to provide you with options, which is good um, because a lot of VPNs don't. Um, so they also have a residential IP for um, California, Dallas. Um, so the residential IP are unique because it's like the Torguard website company purchased these IPs from these ISPs like Time Warner or Cogent. And these IPs are essentially indistinguishable from regular customers in that you're never really going to be able to be detected on any of these websites. So now for the most part, purchasing a streaming IP for Netflix, you're going to be pretty good. Um, you know, it might get blocked maybe a year later or something, and then you could just email customer support and they'll give you a brand new one. But you're never going to really have to worry about that with a residential IP. It's like the mega solution. Um, for, for most people, if you're on a budget, I would just recommend getting the streaming IP. But if you have money to throw around and you don't want to have any kind of hassle at any point in two, three years even, then a residential IP is going to be the way to go. I would say it's the top solution, but it is going to be more expensive. So, of course, you could use my discount code BEST10VPN on any of these. Um, we'll go ahead and so the difference is, is that with these three options here, um, it's going to impact these. So the discount code is going to give you 50% off. Whereas the residential IP, it's going to knock the 50% off the VPN subscription, but it's not going to impact this. So no matter what, this is going to be $8 a month. So that price can add up. But like I said, it is the best solution. It's pretty much indistinguishable from a normal IP. No other VPN is really offering residential IPs. But for the most people, like I said, streaming IP will be good enough. So um, you're going to pick this. And it's going to be $18. And then, of course, like I said, you can use my promo code best10vpn.com, best10vpn. And it's going to be $9 a month. You could lower this price if you want to get a yearly. It could be, you know, 2 or $3 a month um, if you do decide to do that. Now, this is going to be cheaper than NordVPN, ExpressVPN, some of these other VPNs that are competitors that claim to do the same thing. These VPNs cost 12 or $13 a month. So, guys, let me know if you have any questions about that, but it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, thanks for checking out this video, just an in-depth analysis of Torvert and what kind of IP features they are offering. Stick around on the channel and I'll give more tips and tricks about TorGuard, but also about other VPNs, other tech and gadgets and stuff like that. I'll see you again on the next one.